I've worked at one, two, three, seven tech startups and two big tech companies. I've also interviewed at many more. So I'm going to share with you what the hiring process for these companies in tech is like. Every company in tech takes inspiration from the big tech companies like Apple and Google when it comes to laying out the hiring process. Some of the other tech companies will add their own spin on it, but it's essentially the same thing. Some small or even mid-sized companies sometimes get carried away and think they're Apple. Listen, Apple is a trillion dollar company and everyone wants to work for them, so they can do whatever they want. They want to have a nine hour interview process? Sure, go for it. They want to make me do a two week design challenge and then ghost me? Fine by me. But when a startup with $10 million in funding asks me to do a nine hour onsite interview, all I have to say is, I don't think you have the facilities for that big man. No offense. Anyways, as I share this process with you, I'll be taking examples from real life interviews that I've done. That being said, the process is generally five steps. After you apply, if they like you, within a few weeks, they'll email you asking to schedule the first interview. That will lead to step one. Step one is the recruiter screening. You're going to have a chill call with the recruiter talking about yourself, talking about compensation visa and some logistical stuff she'll also tell you a little bit about the company and unless there are any red flags with you you're probably going to move on to step two step two is usually the director of engineering technical interview the head of engineering will do a technical interview with you he or she will ask you some technical questions and they'll also ask you to tell them a little bit about yourself and your background and they're probably going to ask you to walk them through your resume but definitely be expecting technical questions in this stage and by the way, if you struggle with these kind of technical questions, I'm currently working on building a platform that will prepare you for mechanical engineering technical interviews. Sort of like leak code, but for mechanical engineering. If you want to be among the first people to access it, I'll put a link in the video description where you can put in your email and right when it launches, you'll be notified so you're amongst the first people to use it. Anyways, step three is a senior engineering technical interview. You get on a call with a senior engineer, they'll ask you some technical questions and they'll ask you a little bit about your past experience and some of the projects you worked on in your previous work. Step four is the engineering design challenge. You're going to be sent an assignment and that assignment is going to be similar to the kind of work you can expect to do at that job. Usually you'll be designing and creating something and you're going to have to make a presentation on the thing you created. You'll be presenting it in front of a bunch of people and they're going to ask you a few questions about it most likely. Now this doesn't always happen, right? Some companies choose to not do an engineering design challenge because it is time consuming for both the interviewer and yourself. So some companies will just move on to step five. Step five is the interview panel, where you're gonna have back-to-back -back technical interviews with a bunch of different members on the team. You can be talking to anywhere from three to 10 different people on the team. Some of them will be in the same engineering discipline as you. Some of them will be on cross-functional teams. Some of them will be managers or product managers. So, you know, it really depends on what the company itself chooses to do. But depending on how many people you're interviewing with that day, that can range from anywhere between two to nine hours yeah nine hours i've done nine hour long interview panels before now of course at any moment in between any of these steps you can be ghosted rejected or ignored so there is no promise that you're gonna move through all these steps one by one even if you're qualified and if you have good experience there's just a lot of luck involved at the end of the day so if you're ever ghosted rejected or ignored don't take it personally now before covid most of these interview panels were done on site but after covid a lot of these interview panels are now done online and if a company really 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 has money then they'll fly you out to their office to do the on-site interview anyways let's delve a little deeper into the five steps so for the first step recruiter screening every call starts off basically the same you answer the call they're like hi is this tamer you respond with yep that's me how's it going and then they almost always say hey is this still a good time to chat obviously i enthusiastically respond saying yeah yeah of course it still is but in my head i'm always like why do you ask this question? Like, obviously it is like, if it wasn't a good time, then much earlier, I would have probably emailed you asking to reschedule, but whatever we move on. Just imagine if I actually said no to that question. Like actually, yeah, this is not a great time. So call me back later. Bye. I don't know. That'd be weird. Anyways, after this semi awkward introduction, usually they'll start off by telling you about the company and the role. And in a way it kind of feels like they're trying to sell you something, right? They're trying to make you like the role and be attracted to the idea of working for that company. But I always find this part interesting because it almost feels like the recruiter, 
he or she is reading off a script because they don't have a technical background, but they just have a document that probably has technical writing that the hiring manager wrote for them and they're just reading it off. It's obvious because they're usually speaking pretty fast and they're using engineering and technical terms that they've probably never heard of before. Like for example, a recruiter will say, here at Yander, we use gradient boosting regression to make a robust predictive model to redefine the way people experience entertainment on aircrafts. Then they'll be like, hey, do you have any questions? I try to keep my questions pretty high level because again, there's no point of getting into technical questions with recruiters. But in terms of questions that they ask me, Usually after they give me their speech on why their company is amazing, they'll ask me things like, tell me about yourself, what's your visa situation like, what compensation would you be looking for, how many years of experience do you have, what tools or software are you most comfortable using. These are just some examples. Again, everything is pretty much high level. There's no technical detail needed here. To do these types of technical engineering interviews, especially ones that can be really, really long, I like to have a notebook with me where I can brainstorm some ideas to answer technical questions, or at least a notebook where I can write down the technical questions they asked so I can keep track of them. So this was one notebook that I got from Temu. They're actually sponsoring this part of the video. This nice leather notebook from another platform will cost $24, but from Temu it's only $5. But the quality of them is nearly the same. The reason Temu is so affordable is because the products you order on there come directly from the factory. So the usual chain of sellers we have that hike up the price aren't there. In traditional retail stores, there are additional prices that are added that hike up the prices for consumers like you and I when we buy the product. Something that costs $4 to make can be marked up and sold to you and I for like $70. But thankfully, Tamo is redefining the norm. And with the money you have left over, you can go buy something else. Normally, I may find myself spending $100 on an item if I were to buy it somewhere else, but if I were to get it on Tamo, I might only spend what, 20, 30 bucks on it? And it's the same quality, but I ended up saving 70 or 80 bucks. And if you're curious to learn more about Temu, check out these articles that were written on them by USA Today, Grit Daily, and YouGov. According to one report, it said nearly a quarter of Americans who are aware of Temu say they are more likely to buy from the brand again. So try it for yourself. Everything is such a low price. So honestly, you have nothing to lose. You can get clothes, shoes, instruments, luggage, kitchen stuff, whatever. Anyways, back to the interview process. It will start off with also a semi-awkward introduction. Hey, how's it going? Good, you man. Pretty good. So, Tamir, is that correct? How do I pronounce it? Tamer. Like Gamer. Tamer. Okay, so very Americanized. Or is that just the original pronunciation? So, I have to like Americanize my name. My oh. name's like, the way you pronounce my name is like, uh, um, but like Americans just can't say. Yeah, no, I'm the same thing. Uh, I, I definitely Americanized my name uh, so that it's like easier to say. I obviously try to be as enthusiastic as possible when I'm doing these interviews. Again, a lot of these hiring managers, engineers in general, are not very social. So they tend to be pretty awkward. And I'm a pretty social person. So usually when I do these interviews, I, you know, I try to make conversation at least at the beginning, you know, to keep things interesting and not make them seem like or not make them think that I'm not an interesting person, you know? But there's only so much I can do because that awkwardness is obviously a result of the fact that we're meeting each other for the first time. Anyways, once the awkwardness is done, the technical interview will be broken down into three stages. First, a tell me about yourself section, then a walk me through your projects section, and then a technical question section. Here are some example questions from actual interviews that I've done. Before sharing them with you, I'll make sure to keep the identity of the people involved private. Tell me about the stuff that you design and then fabricated and how many of those things that you do a shit job of that you have to figure out yourself afterwards to make it work. Yeah, uh, I think kind of the best way to do that, you mind if I share my screen and then I can show the project and then that would just easier. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about sort of stuff that you designed and built that didn't go the way that you wanted it to go. For sure. Um, I'll talk about Surf Robotics as well because I was fortunate that not that I designed some stuff, but I was also able to go on the manufacturing line and see how they got put together. Now, tell me a little bit about your fabrication experience. Like, what have you built with your own hands? So, not just like, like, what have you designed and then like had it fabricated? Like, like, 
tell me about stuff that you've built. So little systems, um, physical things that you've constructed out of parts that you can buy with e eBay or, or Amazon or like the cost of car or something like that. Tell me what you know about yeah, and why you want to work. Yeah, so obviously I did a little bit of research with the company uh, when I was applying. Where do you see yourself doing it? Uh, honestly, I, you know, I see myself getting into like, you know, as a mechanic, working as a mechanical engineer, uh, you know, doing both design work and manufacturing work, um, kind of taking the product development process. I those who do, who do, um, you want to do DFM, um, and do FA, mm -hmm. uh, Tesla. And so, uh, I was hoping to talk to you a little bit more about how you, like, what kind of what your mentality is around. DFM, DFA, and, and what kind of specific um, things you're doing uh, in these projects to address manufacturability and assembly. Do you, like, did, was there any specific um, tricks you used or techniques you used to limit the number of machine setups? On like a one to ten, how, um, how comfortable are you in a machine job? In university, I would say like eight or nine. Now, maybe like six because just has been a few years since uh i you know used them myself so let's get let's do some type of questions yeah for uh, sure so my first one is uh, let's say that i that you have two spheres that are the same size same mass and they look the same uh, and i tell you that one of them is hollow how much you figure out which one is hollow why is the, the socket of a hex socket hex shaped? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, why is a sock? Why is it hex shaped? Now, after all their questions are done, usually they'll give you five to ten minutes at the end, sometimes even fifteen minutes, to let you ask them questions about the role in the company. Now, try to have at least two to three questions planned for them. And honestly, based on these last five or ten minutes, if they're enthusiastic with how they're responding to your questions, that means they probably liked you, and you're probably going to move forward to the next stage. But if they're a little bit monotone or dull, then maybe they didn't really like you, or they didn't think you're qualified enough but also they could be monotone and dull and still let you move forward to the next stage again some engineers are just monotone like that they're just socially awkward you can't really do anything about it so that was step two and three the technical interviews moving on to step four we have the engineering design challenge now again not every company or startup will have this stage but for those that do there are two types of engineering design challenges that you can get first it can be an open-ended problem like this where you're asked to design a bike mount from scratch you're usually given design requirements as you see here and you have to submit your 3d cad some documentation and just do some basic engineering analysis or second it can be a cad test where they send you 2d engineering drawings as you see here and they ask you to create a 3d model using the cad software of your choice and send it back to them again your 3d cad model is going to be based on the 2d engineering drawings they sent you they're basically just doing this to make sure that you actually know how to CAD. Personally, I prefer the second approach over the first approach because the second one is very objective. You know, you just CAD the part and there's really just one way to do it. Whereas the first part is very subjective and you know, if they ask you to design a bike mount, there's just so many ways to do it. There's no one right answer. So if I do like the open-ended problem, I don't know if I got it right. But if I do the CAD test, I know if I got it right before I even submit it. I remember one of the first ever design challenges I did was for this tech startup that's based in SF and they asked me to make a key holder. That was a design challenge. Keep in mind, the company had nothing to do with keys or key holders at all. All they wanted from me was to create a four page presentation on my thought process when it came to designing this key holder and what materials and manufacturing processes I'd use to make it. This is what I created. You see, I started off defining the product need and design requirements on slide one, clearly listing the six main features of the design. Then I shared some design concepts on slide two and three based on each of the six features. Finally, on slide four, I share my material selection and manufacturing process for how this thing will be made. I also include the CAD model and I also 3D printed it. So I shared the image of the prototype that I built and some of the testing procedures that I would do. Now, they didn't ask me to make this 3D printed prototype at all, 
but I thought making it would help me stand out a little bit, so I made it. Now, this was the first ever engineering design challenge I ever did. So looking back on it, I know it's not perfect. This was also for an internship position, so my experience back then was obviously way, way less than I have now. So yes, there is room for improvement on this design challenge, but I'm only sharing it because I ended up getting an offer from that company based on this engineering design challenge. So just to give you an idea of what some of these design challenges look like. Anyways, moving on to the last and final step of the interview process is the interview panel, the longest part of the entire process. Now, if you made it this far, you're probably super, super excited, but unfortunately, people can still be rejected after the interview panel. Tech companies are ruthless. Anyways, at this stage, yeah, you're doing back-to-back -back technical interviews, sort of similar to what step two and three were like, except it's like multiple of those in one day. But the cool part is when you're doing this interview panel, not all the interviews will be technical. Some of them can actually be behavioral, where they're asking you questions like, tell me about a time where you had to go through a failure and what you did to overcome it. Overall, yeah, the interview panel stage tends to be super exhausting, but it's just part of the process. I don't know who decided this interview panel is a good idea because it's a very stressful and hectic day. Like sometimes by the time it's the last interview of the day, they can ask you questions that you would normally know how to answer, but you've already done so much throughout the entire day that you're just like, you may say something silly or like incorrect, and they'll hold you onto that, you know? So it's not nice. But that's it. If all five steps go well, you end up getting an offer. And these five steps will take you anywhere between two to six months. Yeah, two to six months, sometimes could even be longer. Anyways, I really hope this video brought you immense value. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.